Finals SAQ64, Renal Replacement Therapy A. What are the indications for RRT in the intensive care setting? This includes acute kidney injury with refractory fluid overload, refractory hyperkalemia, metabolic acidosis, rapidly increasing urea and creatinine, symptomatic uremia, oliguria and anuria. Uremia may present with anorexia, nausea, pruritus, encephalopathy, asteresis, perigarditis, and bleeding due to platelet dysfunction. Overdose with dialyzable toxin or drug. A mnemonic to help remember dialyzable toxins is plasma TV, P for phenobarbital, phenytoin or paracetamol, L for lithium, A for acidosis, S for salicylates, M for metformin, A for alcohols or amphetamine, T for theophylline, and V for valproate or carbamazepine. Characteristics of dialyzable toxins They are small, lack charge, have high water solubility, small volume of distribution, and low protein binding. Severe sepsis is an indication for RRT. Special blood purification filters such as Osiris is able to remove inflammatory mediators, endotoxin, fluid, and uremic toxins simultaneously. RRT is also indicated in the management of pre-existing chronic kidney disease. A useful mnemonic to help remember indications for RRT is AEIOU, where A stands for acidosis, E for electrolyte imbalances, I for ingestions, O for overload, and U for uremia. B. List the types of RRT available in intensive care. This includes intermittent hemodialysis, continuous renal replacement therapies, and hybrid therapies. Intermittent hemodialysis is cheaper, efficient, but more rapid fluid shifts may not be tolerated in the cardiovascularly unstable. IHD is not available in all ICUs. Pure ultrafiltration, PUF, refers to fluid removal without convective or diffusive clearance. Examples of CRRTs are CVVHF, CVVHD, CVVHDF, SCUF, slow continuous ultrafiltration, and peritoneal dialysis. PD does not have the efficiency of hemodialysis and may cause problems with diaphragmatic splinting in ventilated patients and is not appropriate in patients with intra-abdominal pathology. Hybrid therapies includes sustained low efficiency dialysis, SLEP, aka prolonged intermittent renal replacement therapy, extended daily dialysis, EDD, and slow continuous dialysis, SCD. C. Outline the principal mechanisms of solute and water removal by RRT. In hemodialysis, blood is pumped through an extracorporeal circuit that incorporates a dialyzer, which is a semi-permeable membrane separating blood from crystalloid solution, the dialysate. Blood flows on one side of the semi-permeable membrane, and the dialysate, which contains various electrolytes, flows along the other side, usually in the opposite or counter-current direction. Solutes move from high concentration to low concentration according to Fick's law of diffusion. The concentration gradient drives electrolytes and water-soluble waste products from the plasma component into the dialysate. Dialysis results in diffusive clearance, preferentially of small molecules. The dialysis machine generates a pressure across the membrane to drive plasma water from the blood side to the dialysate side. In hemofiltration, blood is pumped through an extracorporeal system that incorporates a semi-permeable membrane. Plasma is forced from the blood space into the effluent via application of hydrostatic pressure across a highly permeable membrane. Hydrostatic pressure drives plasma water across the membrane, i.e. ultrafiltration. Small molecules, less than 50 kDa, are dragged across the membrane with the water by convection. This results in convective clearance of small and middle-sized molecules through the physical property of solvent drag. Ultrafiltrate is discarded and replacement fluid added according to desired fluid balance. This modality does not significantly change the concentration of serum electrolyte and waste products unless a replacement fluid is infused into the blood, diluting out those solutes the physician wishes to remove and increasing the concentration of those solutes in which the patient might be deficient. In hemodiofiltration, this technique makes simultaneous use of hemofiltration and hemodialysis 
resulting in both diffusive and convective clearance. Overall, 59.1% pass rate. Additional Q&A What are hybrid therapies? This term refers to the recently developed hybrid modes of dialysis that falls under the broader term PIRRT or SLED. Dialysis can be delivered through a variety of conventional IHD machines, usually with some minor modifications to allow for slower dialysate flow compared with IHD. Therapy is delivered intermittently but over a longer time period, 6 to 12 hours per session, than conventional IHD, which usually lasts 3 to 4 hours per session, and SLED is often provided on a daily basis. Thus, hybrid therapies have many benefits of CRRT, for example, more gentle fluid shifts and therefore better hemodynamic stability without some of the disadvantages. When should CRRT or hybrid therapies be considered? They should be considered in the presence of an indication for dialysis, when hemodynamic stability is of concern, to achieve high solute clearance, in cases of raised ICP, as slower fluid rates in CRRT or hybrid therapies results in less fluid or osmolar shifts that may exacerbate cerebral swelling. Absence of severe life-threatening hyperkalemia and absence of poisoning, as IHD is preferred to CRRT in patients with severe hyperkalemia and ingestions because the clearance per unit time is faster with intermittent hemodialysis compared with CRRT. What are the potential advantages of CRRTs or hybrid therapies over IHD? This includes hemodynamic stability, capacity for increased fluid removal due to longer duration of therapy, improved clearance of nitrogenous waste, improved control of acidosis, and fewer fluctuations in ICP. What are some disadvantages or complications of CRRTs? This includes risk inherent to obtaining central venous excess. Subclavian venous excess should be avoided due to tendency for subclavian stenosis with an indwelling catheter. Because of its continuous nature, CRRT requires long-term relative immobilization, increasing the risk of venous thromboembolism, pressure ulcers, and physical deconditioning. Continuous anticoagulation may be necessary to prevent filter clotting and subsequent blood loss, and this may increase the bleeding risk. CRRT frequently results in hypothermia unless extracorporeal blood warmers are installed. Hypothermia may mask the development of a fever. Electrolyte abnormalities or hypovolemia may also develop with CRRT. CRRT is highly labor-intensive, typically requiring one-to-one -one nursing and therefore it is costly. List the basic components of a prescription for intermittent hemodialysis and for CRRT. For IHD, dialysis excess may be AV fistula, AV graft, or dialysis catheter. Treatment duration, for ESRF it is typically 3 to 4 hours. For AKI, initial sessions are shorter with slower blood flow and dialysate flow rates to prevent this equilibrium syndrome. Filter size and type, biocompatible dialysis membranes are now routinely used. Blood flow rate, for AV fistula or graft, up to 400 to 450 mL per minute. For dialysis catheter, up to 350 mL per minute. Generally, the faster the flow, the more efficient the dialysis. Dialysate flow rate is 500 to 800 mL per minute. Dialysate buff, concentrations of potassium, sodium, calcium, and bicarb can be customized based on patient's lab studies. Ultrafiltration goal, this is the amount of fluid to be removed from the patient over the course of the session. This is determined by clinical assessment of the patient's volume status. Anticoagulation. Clotting within the dialysis circuit can result in significant blood loss. Heparin is typically used unless the patient has a contraindication. For CRRT, mode of therapy should be specified such as CVVH, CVVHD, or CVVHDF. Dialysis excess is usually dialysis catheter. AV fistula or grafts are not typically used for CRT as the prolonged nature of therapy can damage these types of excess. Timing for CRRT initiation and discontinuation is based on clinical judgment. Higher urine output, higher creatinine clearance and lower serum creatinine can predict successful CRRT cessation. 
filter size and type should be specified. Regional or systemic anticoagulation approaches are available. Citrate anticoagulation is an alternative to heparin. Citrate is administered to chelate calcium, a critical cofactor in the clotting cascade. Regional citrate anticoagulation reduces the risk of circuit loss, filter failure, bleeding, and heparin-induced thrombocytopenia. However, avoid citrate in patients with severe liver failure or a serum lactate of more than 4 due to risk of citrate intolerance. In acute liver failure, consider performing CRRT without anticoagulation. Blood flow rates is 150 to 250 ml per minute, which is typically slower than intermittent hemodialysis. For citrate, CVVHDF prescribed a lower blood flow rate of 120 ml per minute as higher rates necessitate higher dose of citrate, increasing the risk of citrate toxicity. Dialysis or replacement fluid. The specific fluid is based on the metabolic parameters of the patient, including the patient's acid-base status and serum potassium concentration. Bicarb buffered solutions are preferred over lactate buffered solutions to prevent iatrogenic hyperlactatemia. Phosphate-containing solutions are available. These are effective in preventing hypophosphatemia but may increase the risk of hypocalcemia and metabolic acidosis. In patients receiving regional citrate anticoagulation, use commercially available pre-blood pump fluid containing citrate as well as calcium-free dialysate and post-dilution replacement fluid to preserve the anticoagulant effect of citrate. Dialysate or replacement fluid flow rate is 20 to 25 ml per kg per hour. Patients with severe metabolic derangements may benefit from higher CRRT dosage, such as in hyperammonemia or hyperkalemia. However, studies have shown no mortality difference between patients with low or higher dialysis replacement fluid flow rate. Patient fluid removal the difference between ultrafiltration and replacement of dialysis volumes determines fluid removal. Speed of fluid removal is referred to net ultrafiltration rate. Optimal values are not yet established. Regularly reassess fluid status to adjust NUF rate accordingly. Avoid very high NUF rates, more than 2 ml per kg per hour, unless aggressive fluid removal is indicated by life-threatening fluid overload. What kinds of lab tests should be ordered regularly for patients receiving CRRT? Sodium, potassium, bicarb, calcium and phosphate levels can change rapidly during CRRT. Monitor every 6 to 8 hourly. Hyperphosphatemia frequently occurs in IHD due to inefficient clearance of phosphate. Hypophosphatemia is more common during CRRT given continuous clearance of phosphate. Hypocalcemia and hypomagnesemia is also seen especially when these cations are complexed with citrate or when a replacement fluid without these cations are infused into the patient. Hyperlactatemia may occur in patients with impaired lactate metabolism, such as in severe sepsis or hepatic failure, especially if the dialysate or replacement fluid contains lactate as the base equivalent. In these cases, use bicarbonate-based dialysate or replacement fluid and monitor acid-base status regularly by blood gas measurements. What are the nutrition considerations for patients with AKI receiving renal replacement therapy? Amino acids are lost in both IHD and CRRT. Critically ill patients with AKI are often highly catabolic and many patients receiving CRRT will require at least 1.5 to 2 grams per kg per day protein or amino acids. Water-soluble vitamins are lost in both IHD and CRT. Replacement of these vitamins can be achieved with the daily administration of a vitamin complex specifically designed for patients receiving renal replacement therapy. Fat-soluble vitamins are protein or lipoprotein bound and are therefore not significantly cleared by CRT or intermittent hemodialysis. Trace minerals such as zinc may be dialyzed with renal replacement therapy. The benefit of supplementation in this situation remains unproven. Aluminium-containing products, which were used in the past as phosphorus binders, should be avoided for any substantial period of time due to potential of aluminium systemic toxicity. These are my references. Thank you.